There's Bill. Okay. That's who I was looking for. Okay. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, coming today. Uh, <clears throat> I'll, uh, I'll show you the agenda. Uh, this is uh, this is very similar uh, similar to what we did uh, last year. Uh, last year, the meeting was on uh, December nineteenth, and you'll see. Um, um, how, how the presentation will go. Um, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going <clears> to <throat> go through a, a presentation on um, everyone. If you remember last year, uh, those of you that attended uh, I, I, on the presentation, we had every one of the SR6 recommendations and the current status of the uh, recommendation and where we are with it and things like that. Uh, what I did for this presentation, I, I added a section to each one of the slides on what has been accomplished, what has been uh, accomplished uh, uh, from SR6, from SR6. Uh, so, so, um, so how we'll do this in, in the success of these meetings, the success of these meetings that I have learned is um, to keep things moving, uh, we will ask for an opening statement from every one of you after the presentation. So what I would like you to do is pay attention as I go down through the slides, as I go down through the slides and take some notes on, on, on uh, if you have number one questions on, number one would be questions on, on the, uh, the act that, that has been established in regards to the SR6 recommendation. If you have a, a question for act, about Act 91 or something to do with implementation. Uh, number two, uh, what you would like to see, uh, what you would like to see addressed or is there something that, that should be a priority moving forward? Because we do have uh, staff uh, staff from the Senate and the House on the call or on, on the Zoom meeting. Uh, and, and if there's any, uh, uh, so what, what I'll do with that opening statement, I'm going to read down your name. Okay, I'll ask, uh, you know, I'll say, okay, um, we'll start with, you know, for example, Steve, Steve Bear, and, and Steve will, you know, give the opening statement uh, and stuff like that on, on what he feels, you know, what, you uh, uh, you know, what, what he would state, and then we will move to the next person. We will move to the next person and to the next person, to the next person, to the next person, to the next person, until we've got everybody who wants to say something, or I will, even if you don't want to say anything, just acknowledge you don't want to say anything. And then I will ask if there's any follow-up statements, if there's any follow-up statements. So um, with that in mind, uh, I'm not going to do that introduction because that'll, time, that'll take take some some more of our time and I'll be watching the screen. Uh, so with any anything like that, uh, I, I will start down this uh, this presentation uh, as, as we go. So um, so if you remember, here is our timeline. OK, here's our timeline. Uh, and again, our last meeting. And again, this is when SR6 started. The, uh, the, the timeline from before. And, and again, some of the successes that we've had is, you know, late fall 2020, uh, when, when the series of bills uh, became law. Okay, so each one of these, so you will see, for example, on this slide, how this is driven today is the top part of the slide in black is from last year's presentation. Okay, last year's presentation. And in red is what has been done, okay? What has been done uh, in regards to uh, uh, dealing with the recommendation and dealing with the recommendation. Uh, and, and again, um, you know, what, what I'll do again, we're gonna go down through these uh, for the 23 or 26 recommendations. I'll go down through. There may be one of the, when we reach a slide, um, there, I may be asking some of you uh, to clarify some things. So for example, when we get to the fireworks slide, I'm gonna ask Chief Delaney to, um, 
uh, to, to pipe up and chime in on, on the status of that. And there may be other slides that I'm going to ask that, that I'm going to either ask somebody or there is a note that I have for clarification. <clears throat> and I'd like you to jump in on that. So again, uh, SR6 recommendation number one, okay, SR6 recommendation number one uh, was to expand, modernize, and incentivize recruitment and retention efforts, okay? And one year ago, uh, again, the uh, Office of the State Fire Commissioner received funding from the General Assembly for the technical advisors, okay? And that was, uh, again, Act 1 of uh, Act 1A of 2019, uh, allocating funds to the Office of the State Fire Commissioner. Okay. Uh, addition, uh, the, uh, hey, Jerry. Yes. They're, you're still they're showing the first slide, so I don't know if yours is moving. It's not moving for us, I don't think. Okay, thank you for jumping in there. All right. Thank you for jumping in there. Hold on. Which slide do you guys see right now? Uh, four, slide four, expand, modernize, and incentivize. Okay, and you, is that big enough for everyone to see? Yes. Okay, I will keep it like that. Okay, so this is what I just talked about. I'll keep it like that uh, in, instead of making it the, uh, the, the large presentation. Thank you. So again, uh, again, that was Act 1A was the allocation of funds to the Office of the State Fire Commissioner. Uh, the additional piece, uh, again, is uh, the new grant program that was reauthorized allows use of the funds for recruitment and retention efforts, the Relief Association funds for recruitment and retention efforts, and uh, that includes uh, establishing length of service award programs, okay? And that was Act 91, and that's addressed in the next slide also. So I also put on here is Act 108 of 2020 is workers compensation for uh, workers, workers compensation coverage for administrative members and things like that. Uh, again, uh, that the reason why I put that under um, uh, number one, incentivize recruitment and ret retention efforts, that is one of those things that could assist in a department worrying about, uh, you know, a member that's not covered. <clears throat> Number two, the, the, when we talked about last year, if you look at last year, we talked about one of our priorities as the grant program reauthorization. We all knew that the grant program reauthorization, again, the top of this slide is what we talked about last year, okay, is what we talked about last year. Uh, again, obviously this year, Act 91 of 2020 uh, was enacted. Uh, some changes to the Office of the State Fire Commissioner, uh, developing the, the statewide uh, fire advisory board, uh, the relief association issues, transferring the relief association, and reauthorization of the grant program, reauthorization of the grant program, okay, that, that uh, and allowing additional uses of the, the grant program, the, the grant program, all right. So again, what I'd like you to do is Take notes as I'm talking. You will get a chance to talk about these or ask questions about these once we get down through and I'll, I'll read everyone's name. Okay, that's that's the procedure for, for how to do this effectively. Okay. The next thing. Okay, this was uh, recommendation number two uh, from SR6. Um, use uh, financial and non-financial incentives for recruitment and retention. So again, as part of uh, Act 91, as part of Act 91, uh, what the local school district tax credit was, uh, was included in that. That was uh, the former House Bill uh, 1708, um, House Bill 1673 with uh, LOSAP, that was included, uh, reauthorizing, again, the grant program. And additionally, uh, as part of Act 91, would allow for a county tax credit for uh, volunteer responders. Again, if you see the three other uh, House bills on here that were uh, were were uh, in the mix last year, the reason why there's a was a uh, there's reason why there's a line through that is those were not included in uh, you know Act 91. Okay, those were not included in, in Act 91. Um. So the next one, recommendation number three, uh, 
ensure minimum uh, fire and EMS coverage through government partnership. Again, last year we had the standard of cover discussion and we had a presentation and discussion about the CCAP EMS task force, the CCAP EMS task force. Uh, and the result of that was uh, significant work on, on Senate Bill 1274, uh, the countywide fire and EMS authorities, okay? But countywide fire and EMS authorities. And there's been significant work on that. And obviously that'll, that'll need to be reintroduced. Uh, and and uh, that I'm sure there'll be some discussions on that later on in, in this meeting. Okay, uh, next up was uh, correct EMS reimbursement rates to allow for competitive compensation. Okay, and that was House Bill 1374. Uh, and then there was a discussion about balanced billing. And, and I believe there's been no movement in that. Uh, Heather or Jeanette, do you want to please chime in specifically about number four here? Um, this is Heather. I can chime in about this. Uh, okay, House sure. Bill 1347 was uh, talked about in conjunction with House Bill 1862, which was the prohibition on balanced billing, as well as the dental uh, direct reimbursement as well. So it got kind of mashed in with the other two bills and um, none of them went anywhere. And I assume, I have not heard, but I know that Representative Mosser will probably reintroduce it again in January. So it's, it's not a dead deal, um, but it will definitely come up again. And there's been some movement at the federal level with um, some prohibition on balanced billing, but there's supposed to be a task force that's going to be looking at it. So I don't know if uh, the prohibition on balanced billing will be introduced again in January or not. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Next up, uh, recommendation number five uh, as part of SR6 was the development of a state fire commission. Uh, and again, uh, their, uh, Act 91 of 2020 establishes the statewide fire advisory board. Act 91 of 2020 establishes the statewide fire advisory board. Next one, uh, number six was simplify regionalization. SR6 number six was simplify regionalization. Again, uh, the, the work of the CCAP EMS task force, I do not believe there was any other work in regards to this uh, and no movement or any work on simplifying the concepts of regionalization, nor, nor, or, nor the, could there be, I'm not really sure yet. Uh, that may be one of those things to continue to explore. Number 11, regional technical advisors for community risk reduction. Uh, there was no movement on that. Uh, there was again, that, uh, that uh, allocation of funds for recruitment and retention advisors, recruitment and retention advisors for the office of the state fire commissioner. And again, if you remember this concept uh, as part of SR6 was to have those regional technical advisors that would be able to assist uh, local organizations with a variety of different things. Next one, uh, review, um, review uh, and revise EMS Act. Uh, and it specifically was talking, uh, we talked about that uh, staffing waiver for EMS. Uh, and, and, and again, Act 17 of 2020 did provide that staffing waiver for EMS. So that, that, that piece uh, was accomplished, specifically dealing with that, that staffing waiver. Uh, again, I believe that review and revise the EMS Act, the rules and regulations, that was more of a bigger, a bigger vision for SR6. Um, Jeanette, could you uh, comment on that? Yes. Um, I think the intent here was to just revisit the Act and the regulations with the continued pressure on the, the ambulance agencies to um, meet the requirements and the lack of funding to them. And we did not, we did not get very far on this one. Yes, thank you. Thank you. There'll be continued discussions. Okay, relief, uh, relief. Uh, number nine was uh, the relief association issues. Uh, and again, transferring the relief and set up a formula study. And that was including that was included in Act 91 of 2020. That was included in Act 91 of 2020. Okay, next one, VLAP. 
Okay, volunteer loan assistance program, and that was to add career fire departments to the uh, VLAP program. And there was also a piece in here that would increase the loan amounts to uh, organizations, uh, to, to organizations. And yes, that was included in Act 91 to permit that, but it will need to go to a voter referendum. It will need to go to a, a voter referendum. And I believe that is in the fall or in the spring. I think, uh, is, is there a deadline to do that? Uh, Nate, could you, neither Nate or Mike or someone, could you uh, add uh, on, on when will that referendum occur? Gary, this is Nate. Uh, it, would, it will be on the, uh, the May uh, primary. Uh, May 18th, is that the date? Got it. Sounds May good. 18th, yep. Sounds good. Thank you, Nate. All right, I'm going to keep marching through this. Again, remember, if you have questions, or you'll, questions or when you make a statement, I'll be calling each one of your names. So again, take notes as we go down through each one of these, okay? Uh, EMS relief associations, EMS relief associations, and the 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 uh, the uh, what this was was there's a certain amount of EMS uh, organizations that received uh, relief association funding from their local relief prior to a certain date, and there was a change, and there was an interpretation that uh, that those relief associations were not. Um, part of uh, uh, the, the funding distribution. Uh, and I believe that was corrected uh, as part of Act 91. Uh, is, that, uh, is that a correct? Uh, I believe that was uh, corrected in Act 91 that only relief associations were allowed to do this prior to a certain date. This does not mean that it opens it up. And Nate, I see you shaking your head there. Got it. So that was taken care of. That was uh, an accomplishment. Uh, as part of SR6 there, that was done. Uh, relief administration burden, relief administration burden. And again, this was part of, you know, the, the bigger picture of relief uh, and reforming and revising uh, the relief association concept and uh, trying to uh, assist the uh, organizations um, so there was two steps to this. We talked about, uh, again, step number one, transferring it to the Office of the State Fire Commissioner. Again, that was part of Act 91. As part of Act 91 also includes uh, a study on uh, the distribution formula, the distribution formula of, of relief. And we also discussed the concept of uh, step number two. In uh, step number two being, uh, further dive into relief and, and really ask the question, does it need to be as bureaucratic as it has before? And, and the, the question is, and, and we've had discussions about this with a variety of people, and, and all of you know there's significant rules and regulations and what you cannot do and what you can't do with relief. And, and you know, maybe is it time, is it time just to say, uh, here's your distribution of funds, local organization, do with what you wish, uh, as long as it has to do with some emergency response and, and not have all these uh, 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 burdens that an organization has to track this or do that. Again, uh, what I mean by that is again, um, here's an example is municipalities receive money from many different organizations, many different sources. Uh, they receive money from liquid fuels, they receive money from uh, property taxes, they receive money from um, earned income taxes and a variety of fees and structures. Uh, obviously they have to account for those uh, in sources of income, but they're not required to have a separate organization specifically for those. Our volunteer fire service has to have separate organizations with separate minutes, separate boards and things like that. So again, that's something uh, that we talked about just for your reminders. Uh, loopholes on the foreign fire tax, loopholes on the foreign fire tax. And many of you remember, uh, we, with the PFS EI uh, uh, swab voted to uh, uh, request a study on that. Uh, the swab sent a letter to Governor Wolf, uh, and, and there has been no action on that, uh, the loopholes. Uh, it is our hope that, that uh, as the statewide, the state fire advisory board and the state fire commissioner's office uh, continues to, to implement things as this is, as Act 91 is implemented, that those efforts are, are continued and uh, continued. Moving on, 
EMS operating fund funding streams. Uh, uh, Act 93 of 2020 uh, accomplished uh, what was uh, what was uh, what was requested through the MSOF funding streams. Uh, yeah, that does include uh, a legislative budget and finance committee uh, report on uh, uh, how the how uh, it is being collected at the local level. So again, that was that was addressed with Act 93. Number recommendation 14. Recommendation 15, uh, and, and again, this might be a Heather, Heather uh, feedback on this one, was the EMS uh, payment policies for medical assistance. And again, it's one of those, I do not have situation awareness on that. Heather, could you uh, sure. address that please? Sure, um, this is actually on our radar and our agenda. We have a couple of letters that we're going to be sending out, <clears throat> excuse me, requesting information on payment policies. Uh, the issue I think that we have um, is that everybody who was on traditional Medicaid is gonna be on a Medicaid managed care plan as of January. So there are a couple things in play and um, it is not a dead deal. We have, our board has our strategic planning session in January and it'll be January the 22nd. So I will definitely have more information after that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, number 20, uh, educate municipal officials. And Bruce, I'm gonna be getting you here quick. I'm gonna start marching through these. I know you said 10 o'clock, I'm watching the time here. Um, Bruce, you, you said 10 o'clock, correct? Bruce, are you still with me? Yep, had trouble finding on mute, sorry. Okay, um, you said you, you have to leave at 10, correct? Well, I'm going to try and stay on this and, and do my other activities. But so I'll be listening and I'll try and chip in when I can. Okay, I just wanted to know if you had to leave, I was going to stop right now and let you talk. I'll just continue to march through this and- Go ahead and I'll try to do both, sir. Okay, you'll be, you'll be one of the first ones to, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go through that. So again, recommendation number 16 was to educate municipal officials. Uh, and again, uh, this was uh, part of, uh, you know, this will, this will and must be a continued effort. Uh, this will, it has been, and must be a continued effort. And again, partnering with the uh, organizations that are uh, uh, listed there and continue to, uh, to work with them uh, and, and, and discuss the needs of, uh, um, the, the uh, emergency services in Pennsylvania. Uh, a permanent communications link, okay? Permanent communications link. And again, this is, uh, you. last year you were in the room, this year we're through the Zoom link, okay? You are here and again, this must be a continued uh, sustained effort between the, uh, you know, the organizations on the left and everyone else that you may think of. Uh, that again, that recommendation of SR6 was Again, uh, maintaining a permanent communication link, and, and that's the purpose of this meeting that our organizations are working together. Uh, training levels, okay, training levels. Uh, the, again, as part of SR6, the concept of training. Uh, online training, Act 106 of 2019, that was to kind of put uh, the, the concept of online training into Title 35 that the State Fire Commissioner's Office was authorized to uh, do online training. Act 22 of 2020 was uh, to remove some uh, DCNR regulations for uh, junior firefighting and junior firefighting training. Other than that, we really have not uh, done any, anything specific in regards to uh, recommendation number 18 uh, training levels. Uh, funding basic training, again, funding basic training, that was one of the, uh, the uh, discussions. Uh, also, uh, and that was a fully fund basic training for uh, fire and EMS. Uh, there was no movement last year. There was no movement throughout the year on that one. 20, incentivize employers to allow for uh, firefighters to uh, leave for training or some sort of tax breaks for employers, volunteer firefighters. Uh, there was no movement on that and there was no movement on that also. Uh, restore the FTE funding to community colleges. Uh, there was no movement on that also. 
uh, mental wellness and uh, stress management. Okay, so um, HB 1459 became Act 69 of 2020. Okay, Act 69 of 2020. Uh, and that had to do with, uh, again, the mental wellness, stress management. House Bill uh, 432, I'm going to, uh, um, somebody may have better situation awareness on this. J JT, do you have some situation awareness on 432? What efforts were made? And I know it didn't go anywhere, so maybe you could add to that. JT? Yeah, thanks, Jerry. Uh House Bill 432 uh, voted unanimously. It's the PTSI, which post-traumatic stress injury, um, which used to be, everybody called it PTSD. Um, <laughs> firefighters and EMS are exempt from it. And we're trying to, uh, from claiming it on workman's comp, and we're trying to get it covered so we can get our members help, um, all the firefighters and EMS across the state. And uh, it voted unanimously <laughs> out of... Uh, uh, committee and then it stalled on the floor. We had 88 co-sponsors, bipartisan co-sponsors, and we plan to reintroduce introduce it in the Senate and the House this this spring session. Thanks, JT. Appreciate that. Uh, again, sprinklers. Again, that was part of SR6. Uh, there's been no movement on that. Uh, there has been some movement in regards to fire protection devices. In regards to uh, this is something that's a little it was not part of SR6 but uh, uh, something that I've been working on and talking with uh, Kitta and uh, we had several meetings with uh, the leadership of the House uh, Republican uh, and I think Mike Hillman was part of the the Democrat end on the 10-year smoke 10-year uh, uh, smoke detectors in rental properties um, that didn't go anywhere, but I believe it, it's there's still interest. Uh, I was recently contacted by uh, Sean Carroll from from Kitta, and they're they're assessing whether they want to continue that in next year's session. And again, that would be a mandate of having 10 year smoke detectors in uh, in rental properties in Pennsylvania, mandating that. And I know several of you on the call helped uh, when we did a uh, a call to action on that. Um, and Kitta and, and their lobbyist is working to uh, you know, decide if they're going to continue with that and reintroduce that uh, for the 10-year smoke detector. Fireworks, uh, fireworks. So, uh, and I'm going to have uh, Chief Delaney. I know that Senator Brown put some certain amendments uh, on, on, in something in regards to uh, certain municipalities. So the fireworks update, uh, Chief Delaney, could you uh, give us some uh, update on that? Not much to really update. Um, we're spinning in the in the mud. You know, we, we started back in October of 2017. The Pennsylvania Career Fire Chiefs Association, uh, the Institute, and the Pennsylvania Municipal League all worked together to support legislation. Uh, we had a we had a hearing in Harrisburg on it. Uh, we thought we had some momentum. Uh, there's no less than four different House or Senate bills with regard to fixing the fireworks uh, dilemma. Uh, you know, keep in mind, we have the 19% sales tax, you know, 12 and then the, um, uh, the six, or I should say 18%. So there's a lot of money involved here. Uh, several times we had some good pieces of legislation. And of course, when Senator Brown brought it up, there were only six or seven di different municipalities. He wanted to have the local option uh, so it just it splintered and, and it fell apart. And, um, you know, it, it'll, it'll probably, I, I should say, you know, Representative Ferry really carried the ball with this. And I think he did a really good job. Uh, we had some really good buy-in with the Pennsylvania Municipal League, the Career Chiefs, the Institute. We were all moving forward. We had that hearing. And then um, uh, Representative Martin Causer, who was the, the Ag Committee Chairman, just uh, didn't move it. Uh, Representative Eddie Dapashinsky, uh, who who's a minority chair of, of the committee, really wanted to move things. So I don't know if if it, if it was partisan or, or not partisan, but for one reason or another, uh, it stuck. And um, I, it won't be until this Fourth of July when everyone gets really mad again at the the damage that the fireworks do, whether it be trauma, fire. Uh, 
issues with uh, our, our family pets and animals or PTSD, uh, you know, with, with our servicemen. Everyone knows that it's broke and needs to be fixed, but we can't get a coordinated effort uh, to move any legislation. So that's where it's at. Thank you, Chief. Um, and the next one, uh, 25, was the fire equipment certification uh, through the, uh, and this was again, fire equipment in regards to uh, different types of systems. Uh, I know Senator Brown staff, uh, the Senate Veterans Affairs and Emergency Preparedness Committee staff, PayFed, uh, there's continued work. Uh, it, 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 there's some work behind the scenes, uh, a lot of significant work with the Office of the State Fire Commissioner uh, on this. And this would be establishing a certification program for fire equipment um, uh, installers and things. It doesn't include sprinklers, but includes systems and uh, hoods and things like that. And um, uh, I'm sure that'll be continued uh, into the future. Uh, that'll be continued in the future. But I know the Office of the State Fire Commissioner had a lot, a lot of work on, on that. 26 was the right to know to exempt volunteer fire companies from right to know. I know there was a bill out there on that uh, somewhere. Uh, well, there it is right there, but there was no movement on that. And I'm not sure if there'll be continued interest in, in to exempt volunteer fire companies from the Right to Know Act. Involving stakeholders, rep, uh, number seven, uh, 27. And yes, uh, you know, we continue to involve all the stakeholders uh, around the state. Obviously, we're always looking for uh, continued involvement from other stakeholders as the landscape continues to change. Uh, so there's been other efforts that were not uh, directly tied to a other, other uh, um, um, acts that have been uh, established that were not directly tied to one of the SR6 recommendations, uh, but I did list them here, some of, the, some of the other outcomes. Again, Act 13, it exempt volunteer fire companies from sales and food tax uh, uh, for fundraisers. Uh, Act 26, obviously the $50 million in CARES, funding, CARES Act funding for fire and EMS. Uh, Act 29, uh, exempt and volunteer fire companies uh, from the $700 licensee renewal charge for restaurants and clubs. Uh, Act 105, the, the move over law, it was a name change and increased some penalties. And there was another act that I cannot, I didn't have on my list uh, that had to do with shared uh, fuel storage with local governments. Uh, a volunteer fire company or a volunteer organization could uh, help uh, pay for fuel and it could be shared in the same tank somewhere. So that, that's one of those regulations that are out there. Uh, okay, so uh, here's how we'll, we'll run this. Um, here's how we'll run this. I have a list of everybody who, uh, who, is, uh, who is attending. Uh, and if I, and maybe somebody slipped on that is not there, uh, what I'd like you to do again is make an opening statement. Uh, you know, keep it brief. Ask a question if you have a question. Um, but I want—I do want to start with uh, Bruce. Uh, Bruce, are you able to start and uh, you know give your give your statement and uh, um, for us? So just in case you have to leave. And again, I will be taking some notes. I'll, I'll be attempting to take some notes also as we as we go through so bruce i'll kick it to you first okay sure jerry can you hear me yes okay well one success i was able to unmute um for, first off from from me personally and from the office of the state fire commissioner i want to thank everybody for all their dedicated work and, and their efforts in, in everything that's uh, been going on with sr6 and all, obviously there was quite the movement um in the last uh, legislative uh, opportunities. So uh, um, we, we have been bombarded, obviously, um, and uh, our, our big concerns right now are getting through and finishing up the, the COVID-19 uh, grant, uh, which was uh, a, a very difficult undertaking given the, the timeframes that we had to work in. And uh, it, it also, created issues with the, the applicants because it was a totally new system than what they were used to using. Um, and it, it was unfortunate, uh, but we, we learned a lot about the, the e-grant system that uh, un unfortunately it was just one that we had never used and uh, very difficult to do with the limited number of resources that we have um, to uh, 
uh, since I'm on that, are there any questions, comments, or concern? I know Chief Delaney had one. And I hope I did answer your question, Chief. Thank you. I'm sorry, um, Commissioner. <laughs> no, no worries there, sir. Um, the uh, Commissioner, I yes, sir. Go ahead. Question. Uh, um, we've had we've seen some issues with uh, the municipal departments trying to apply for grants, and they are operating both a fire and an EMS. They only have one EIN, so they're not able to complete applications for both. Is there uh, any way to, that we can address that going forward? Yes, yes, there is. And it was my understanding that we did have a fix for that. Um, if you would uh, be so kind as to send me an email, I'll correct, uh, I, I will get the information from Letitia and, and move forward with that. But it was my understanding that we did have that corrected. I hope I'm not wrong in that statement, but I, I do believe we have it corrected, Mike. Okay, if it has been corrected, it hasn't been communicated to us. And I know Allentown for one particular already just emailed me this morning about it as an ongoing issue. So uh, it has to get communicated a bit better if it has been fixed, but thank you very much. Sure. Um, Mr. 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 Yes, Bill. Um, good morning and uh, thank you for all of your work keeping things uh, steady there at the, in the fire commissioner's office. Uh, with regard to the recruitment and retention positions that uh, and, and funding that you were made available uh, earlier in the year. I, I realize you have your hands full with things. Has there been any plan for that implementation or movement on that? Um, looking for you know coordination opportunities with what the Farmers Association has in place, um, as well as for you know what we can direct people toward you for uh, where it may be appropriate. Yeah, yes, Bill, and uh, that I think I reported out at the, the last meeting the issues we were having with adding our complement and the, the process by which uh, it was really difficult through HR and through Office of Administration. Uh, we were successful at the beginning of this year to get the job descriptions written, the complement, uh, the, the positions added to our complement, and then I believe it was in March they said no hiring. Okay. So um, we, we are looking at, um, there is an exception process um, and we are looking at, at, at that option to try um, and get those people on board. Uh, we certainly didn't forget them, um, but if, if we look at uh, uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, Act 91, we are to put more people on as well um, in, in the nine regions. So as we move forward and that, Please don't think this is a cop out. Um, we are not the only agency that became flat funded due to the, the revenue issues uh, the whole way across the Commonwealth. Um, at, at this point in time, um, uh, you know, the only thing that uh, we're, we're able to look at financially is, is that because there has been money assigned to it, as well as the uh, uh, some of the movement of the farmers' relief. Is, uh, pro program over to our office because there, there was money allotted by a fiscal note to, to move some of that money that was going to uh, uh, DCED to come over to us. So again, not, not trying to talk with a poor mouth, it, it, it's reality, there's no revenue. Um, and we are, we are facing that with, uh, um, in fact, uh, we were pretty much flat funded. Uh, I, I felt fortunate that uh, they, we only uh, were decreased in our funding by uh, about $40,000. So any of the things that we needed to add position-wise from, from Act 91, we cannot do at this time. We're, we're hoping that by the, the, the new budget year at the end of June and going into July, uh, we'll be funded a little better in our effort to, to, to comply with all the, the legislation. Um, and again, please don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not bitter. It's a, it's a reality that I think we all are facing right now. And the fact that, uh, that the, the revenue is down. Um, but again, to answer your question, Bill, we, we do have that in place. And as soon as they lift our restrictions on, on hiring, we plan to move forward with that. Very good. Thank you. I figured as much. Yep. Hey, Commissioner, uh, this is Frank. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can. Uh, just wanted to say I was part of all the arrogant emails and frustration to the certification on the new grant. 
Uh, I appreciate what your staff did on the weekend and Monday morning, testing it and taking care of it. It certainly took a lot of heat off uh, the ignorance of some of our fire service personnel. So thanks for addressing it. I know it was not a big deal Monday morning and it was taken care of, but uh, it's amazing you don't get any letters following those nasty ones saying, hey, thanks for taking care of things. But uh, good job, appreciate all your support there. Uh, thanks, Frank, and, and thank you all for uh, your support in that. Um, to, to make a, a very long story short, in our guidance this year and also in the letters that we sent out for, for opening the 2021 grant year, we did highlight the, the area of a certified member can be used in, in one grant application only. Uh, and the reason for that was uh, in 2019, there were fire companies who filed complaints and the Office of the Inspector General came to us and said, you need to fix this. Um, the, the complaints were um, ac accusations of fraud throughout the Commonwealth of people putting multiple folks on multiple uh, uh, applications, some with and some without uh, the, the permission of that, that uh, certified firefighter. And uh, the only way that we could do anything was to put this out as a, you can only be on one grant. Uh, it was not an easy decision, but it was the only way that we could comply with what the directions were from both our legal folks and the, the office of the inspector general. Um, that's a long story in, in, in a nutshell, if you will. But, um, we, we are taking a serious look on how we can do this I think we all agreed in the past that the, um, the bonus for certified members um, had really reached its, its usefulness and there needs to be something else um, or it needs to be addressed, which we intend to do this year. And hopefully with the board coming on, uh, we'll be able to address that in a manner that works well for everybody. Um, I really, I, I, it really is, is a, is detrimental. I understand there's municipal departments out there that have people that they are using for their grant and they also volunteer somewhere. And now that it, it was not intended to make it a race for who can get that person on their grant application first. That was not the intent of that. It was more of the intent that we had to get control on the numbers that were being used fraudulently. And uh, uh, it is what it is. Doesn't like it, but um, we have to live with it. And yes, I'm still getting pressure from some, from some of the representatives and some, some of the senators to, to change that. And at this point in time, we can't do that. If we try to change that in the grant, um, it, it is going in the, the grant software, it is going to create issues and we'll have to shut the, the grant down for a period of time. Really don't want to do that, uh, given the, uh, the yeah, you know, the, the response from me on that is, hey, we started this late anyways. And um, so we, we want to make sure that the folks have the access that they can get and, and get this uh, on, on the way. I think uh, one of the things that will really be a help is the, uh, the fact that they can still use this for uh, reimbursement for funds that they couldn't raise during COVID. That, that was one of the things that came through with the reauthorization. And um, we, we did highlight that in our program guidance as well as in the application. So um, it, it's difficult times and uh, we're, we're, we're trying to deal with all the, the calls and the questions, but uh, uh, for, for your information, that's why it is the way it is. Commissioner, this is Chief Dierdorf. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, do you, so if, if we are using a grant coordinator, you suggest that we do not have them sign in. We do all the the paperwork then? Uh, I'm not sure I follow you, Chief. Uh, well, what you were just talking about, we do have a uh, grant writer for the city. Are they the ones that should be submitting all this stuff or should we be doing it? Well, I really think it, uh, from what I'm told, it's not that difficult that, uh, that, that we could do it without grant writers. I know most of the folks do. Oh, I agree 100%, but their policy is that they handle all the, the grants. And if that's the, the, the recommendation from the fire commissioner's office, I would prefer to have it back in my hands anyway. <laughs> um, it, it really, I, I, 
the only thing that I can say there is it's really up to the individual municipality. Um, if they re if you you're required to run it through your grant writer, I don't, I don't know that we can do anything about it. We have no problem either way, and uh, it, quite honestly, it's easier for us to deal with uh, the folks like you because we know you and you you know us and what we're trying to accomplish on both sides of that fence. Okay. Lainey, I just one follow up question, uh, sure. and it has it has to do with the COVID nineteen. A reporting, you know, we, we always do the final reports for the normal state fire commissioner grants. Since this is a, of a different type, and since we actually received more money than we applied for, how is that going to work out? Is there going to be a final report due on this, or how, how will that play out? Yes, there, there is a final report uh, template that will be sent to you folks as soon as we get all of the grants out and we know who all got. Um, we, we were hesitant to send it out to everybody who applied or registered uh, simply because there, right now we have quite a few that are um, stopped in, uh, because of a, a CRP issue, which we're trying to correct. Uh, we're trying to follow up with each one of those folks that have a CRP issue to try and make sure that they get their grant. Um, so to, to answer your question, there will be a, uh, a document sent out uh, a little bit later in your report is not going to be due until the end of January. Uh, along with that, there will be a letter describing what it is that they're looking for in that final report, Chief. Yeah, okay. So just, just as a follow-up, and then I'll, I'll turn it over to someone else. So we did receive additional money past what, uh, what was requested. Uh, are we just going to be able to, and if you could just play it out here, the rest of that money, as long as we, we have it spent and we have documentation, for it that will suffice because I'm sure I'm not the only one that got additional funding past what was requested. Sure, uh, and the reason for that was when the, because we had 50 million um, and we had the uh, stipulation to make sure that each company that applied last year would receive the same amount. Uh, given that fact, there was still about 17 million left over. So it was divided equally among those that did not get a grant last year, as well as the additional money then went to um, everybody that, that did apply. That's, that's the reason for you having more money than what you did uh, on your regular grant. Um, that, the answer to your other question is, um, as long as you, you utilize that money in the, uh, under, under the, the guidelines of the CDC, and the most recent guidelines we have were September the 2nd, um, and obviously uh, you can use it for backfill um, on uh, your, your, uh, your, your career folks, and uh, as well as uh, there, there was operating costs. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have that list right in front of me, but uh, as long as you can document that that, that was used in, in reasons for COVID response, um, you're good to go. Uh, fuel, um, apparatus repairs, um, and so on, we're all covered in that. If you don't have that, I'll certainly see that it gets to Jerry and he can send to everybody. That's adequate, thank you. Any other questions for the commissioner? Uh, commissioner, this is Chad again. Yes, sir. Hey, do you have a couple minutes later today for a phone call? Uh, sure, I've got about, about three conference calls. Uh, but, uh, sure, I can work something in that we pull schedule up. Um, best time probably is going to be between two thirty and three. If that'll work for you. Yep, I'll uh, I'll send you a calendar invite so they're both on. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I, I'll be glad. I, I do apologize for not being uh, available for the entire. Uh, a portion of this, but I do want to let you all, all know that I'm, I'm very grateful for everything that you're doing. Um, and, and I really appreciate your patience in, in everything that, that's been going on. And uh, my, my final statement has to be, I, I got to tell you, I have the best staff in the world. Uh, the, the, the folks in Harrisburg have just bent over backwards. We got help from the Academy to, to work on the COVID-19 grant. And um, I, I know it didn't work, look perfect out there, uh, but we're doing our best to get everything out to everybody, as many people as we can. Um, and uh, I, I, again, I just can't say enough about the staff that has, uh, 
has worked wonders. Um, and I know some of them are work, working more than they're submitting their time. Um, the, the inability for us to go to the office uh, on a regular basis, uh, it took a while for us to figure out a way to, to do it with telework because a lot of our, 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 our clerical folks did not have that ability at first. And uh, thanks to Pima IT, uh, we were able to get everybody laptops and, and get that moving. Um, and it was not without some, some struggles, obviously, uh, um, using VPN uh, when they, they were not used to it. And then everybody trying to use it at once created a lot of issues. And, uh, but, but we're learning and I think we've overcome a lot of the issues. And uh, I'm, I'm very grateful to, to be able to do what we're doing at this point in time, thanks to that staff and you folks. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Um, in in I, I just have one overall question in implementation of Act 91. Uh, do you have a, any type of uh, timeline that you have? Uh, I know again you've been busy in the office uh, uh, to get your statewide fire bo advisory board up and running and things like that. Uh, yes and no. It's not in detail. We we have an over uh, overarching. Uh, priority list that that we can do with the budget that we have and uh, I, I'm sorry I, I, it was my intention to have that ready for you today and I do not have it ready um, but one of the things that we, we are working on uh, right now and I just just came across this morning is is that of the uh, the, the tax uh, the tax credit where we need to have guidelines out so we're referring back to 2017 guidelines with, that, that we worked on with DCED, and we hope to have those out in the very near future. So uh, again, we're prioritizing it, what we can do according to budget, budget as well as what we can do um, in the prioritization that was given to us in the act. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Oh, you bet. Thank you. Thanks for all you're doing too, Jerry. Okay, and if there's any further questions for you, we will write those down and we will submit those to you in writing later on. Great, sir. I'll be glad to, to address them as quickly as I can. And thank you all. Please all be safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Okay, so uh, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go down. Uh, if you look at the agenda on the first, uh, have a, everybody will have an opening statement. Uh, and, and, you know, again, uh, any questions or what you would like to see uh, address the next session. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to have a spreadsheet on my right here with people that registered. Uh, I'm going to just start from the top. Um, Tom O'Donnell will go first, then Steve Bear will go next, and I'll start going down. So uh, Tom O'Donnell, I uh, just want to do a quick brief introduction and any opening statements and, and, and what you'd like to see addressed. Gary, thank you. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear me. Uh, you know, I'm here representing the, the, uh, both the Fire Service uh, Emergency Service Institute along with the uh, Fire Association of the State of Pennsylvania, along with Jim Karstetter and company. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, this is the first meeting I'm, I'm actually uh, sitting in on uh, regarding the SR6. So the notes that I have taken, uh, Jerry, um, great presentation. Thanks for the updates. Um, the relief reboot is, is significant. Um, uh, I think for every uh, municipal fire department in, in Pennsylvania, uh, I think relief has outlived its usefulness and needs a, a real strong reboot. Um, along with the countywide fire and EMS authorization. Um, I think they are uh, one and two on the list of following in line with the mental wellness and um, sprinklers, fireworks, right? I, I think we've hit the gamut um, and uh, I look forward to hearing everybody else's comments. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Um, Steve Bear. Good morning. For those of you who haven't had a chance to meet, I'm Steve Bear. I'm the uh, chief of department here in the center region and state college. I also currently serve as the president of the executive board of PF PFESI. The only thing that, uh, first of all, Jerry, thanks for putting the meeting together and I appreciate everyone taking their time to attend today. Um, the only thing on my mind, I, I'd like to echo what uh, Chief O'Donnell said. I think, the, I think the legislature works well on a couple of things that at most at any given time rather than a whole slew of things. And my number one priority is to uh, reboot relief. I, I would agree wholeheartedly with Chief O'Donnell. I think it has long outlived its usefulness. And I think it's an incredibly important tool for us because it, uh, it's one of the few things that 
that has a dedicated funding stream and mechanism. And so it's, at least certainly over the foreseeable future, it's something that could be really helpful without, uh, you know, uh, you know, being cut, Bruce is describing, hey, you know, hiring gets frozen in March and, and my budget's cut 40,000 because of COVID and, the, and the state revenue shortfalls. Relief is one of those few things that the way it's collected is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a little less susceptible to that kind of uh, fluctuation. So relief is my, my number one hot button in 2021. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chaz McGarvey. Thank you, Jerry. Um, first, great work by all, uh, especially with the end of the year push here. And, and Jerry, I thank you for keeping these communications open for everyone. Um, a great tool for us all. Uh, again, as uh, Chief O'Donnell and Chief Ferris stated, you know, this, the reboot of the relief is, is key. Um, one of the things I saw is in a, our outreach, I noticed the PSATs and all them are on there. I, I didn't see the PML on there, the Pennsylvania Municipal League, and, and they might be an avenue we want to try and reach out to with because of the first class townships. Um, I know the career chiefs work with them closely as well. Um, slide 27, you, you were talking about the 10 year smoke detector, uh, Bill, and I do know that the new uh, property ma maintenance code in the, uh, in the, uh, the international codes does have that regulation in there. So might be, we might be uh, doubling our efforts for no reason. And then I, I don't know, um, we talked about the training for the different uh, vendors and things. I, I don't know if you've heard, but in Philadelphia, there's, I know the union has pushed the sprinkler union pipe fitters and stuff that there's going to have to be special certification for anyone installing sprinklers. And I know it's going to be coming out to the suburbs as well. I'm sure it's going to be spreading West. So um, that's all I have. Thanks again for everything. All right, uh, sounds good. Um, Jeanette, Jeanette, and then uh, Joe Gertis uh, from PSET. So Jeanette, you're up next. Okay, thank you. Um, really for us, the focus is looking at the reimbursements um, that they are appropriate for EMS. Um, it's just a a long list of those areas which the Ambulance Association has been managing uh, pretty much on their own for a long time. We kind of split, separated out duties, but now uh, we need to look at this together and really push for appropriate reimbursements at the agency level. Um, I do have concerns that the LBNFC study uh, will be done and handled appropriately. So we're going to be focusing very heavily on that um, and hoping for some kind of information that that when that's going to begin. And then, of course, um, as SR6 uh, described, looking at the act and uh, re-reviewing the EMS Act to, to see if there's anything there that we should consider uh, under the current financial constraints that everyone's experiencing. Thank you, Jeanette. Uh, Joe, do you want to just do a quick uh, introduction and then uh, go ahead? Thanks, Jerry. Uh, really appreciate uh, the opportunity to, to be on and, and listen to this update with everyone. And, uh, uh, you know, I know a lot of, a lot of work uh, uh, has been done uh, and uh, really looking forward to uh, this next uh, uh, legislative session and, and, and getting back at it. Uh, appreciate uh, all the help uh, from from the four chairmen, and and we'll see what kind of changes uh, uh, happen there uh, in the next session. But uh, I, I saw uh, Nate and Mike were on. I'm not sure if anybody else jumped on, but the, these folks have uh, have really uh, worked hard as well with us as we interact with the legislature, and uh, you know, looking forward to uh, uh, to working with everybody here to uh, to get some more things over the goal line. But thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. Uh, Jim Karstetter. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, good morning. Uh, going down through your list, um, one of the things that uh, I think I've uh, been talking about previously that I'd like to see is, is to make sure that we are involved uh, in, in some form or fashion with a seat at the table during the promulgation process of Act 91. Um, the creation of the advisory 
uh, board is not uh, uh, exactly in keeping with what our recommendation was. And I'd certainly like to see uh, our group somehow uh, be assured that uh, we're going to have some input into how that thing is set up and, and uh, put into place. Um, I, I don't wanna just sit back and then react to whatever they decide to do or, or not do. And to, to also uh, uh, use as much of our influence as possible to keep our foot on the accelerator there so that it doesn't uh, uh, go on for uh, five or six years before we see any kind of positive result uh, uh, similar to what we saw with the implementation of, of the uh, EMS rules and regulations uh, after Act 37. Uh, regarding the list that you've had uh, uh, for today, uh, I was looking at uh, uh, your uh, uh, point number six, nine, 10, 13, 19, and 24 as being areas that I think that uh, uh, we need to uh, uh, stress in, in the coming year uh, legislatively. Uh, the regionalism uh, uh, and the, uh, the um, authorities, uh, you've collected a lot of information that uh, has been submitted about changes that we'd like to see um, made in that. Uh, I'd like to to see if somehow or another we could uh, set something up. Uh, I know Frank's on there and we talked at a previous meeting about maybe setting up a, a, a special meeting just to address that and come up with some recommendations for uh, the redrafting of that, of that legislation. And, and, and that would uh, 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 be a priority, I think. Another one on 10 with that uh, primary uh, vote uh, uh, coming up on a referendum uh, in the past, when they've had referendums, uh, we've tried to do as much as we can uh, to, to um, uh, create support for passage of that. And I think uh, we need to be uh, thinking about how we can be involved in supporting a, a, a passage. Uh, our referendums have always received uh, tremendous public support. And uh, I would anticipate that if properly sold, they, uh, they, they would again. Um, the, the loopholes issue uh, uh, in, in number 13, I, I really think that, that, that we need to, to uh, be revisiting that issue. Uh, I know the work that has been done uh, in relief for an example as to the disappearance of funds and the cause for it and stuff like that. Uh, I, I really don't think that we should say, okay, we've addressed that and move on. Uh, I, I especially, uh, uh, with, with uh, uh, arguments to liberalize the use of that, we really need to make sure that, that it's being adequately funded. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm not convinced at, at, at this point in time that, that uh, uh, we're, we're getting uh, all of the revenue uh, into that pot that, that we are entitled to, to, to receive. Um, and, and then uh, 19 and 24, uh, dealing with the uh, uh, basic fire training funding. Uh, we've talked about this before, and, and uh, especially with the uh, 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 cost of, of uh, training that uh, people are, are, are seeing in, in, in uh, uh, cost of instruction. Uh, and the reduction in fundraising efforts, uh, although the grants that uh, uh, are being made available or helpful, they aren't an, an answer uh, moving forward. And I, I think that's something uh, as committed as we all are to training, uh, uh, we don't wanna be uh, put in a position of, of, uh, uh, of pricing out uh, some of our uh, agencies uh, just because of, of cost. And um, uh, lastly, um, on the uh, fireworks, that's been near and dear. And, and uh, uh, I, I still would like to see a total repeal. I realize that probably isn't uh, uh, in, in necessarily the cards, but uh, 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 given the things that uh, we've all heard since it's been uh, uh, passed, uh, uh, both from fire chiefs and animal rights people and so on and so forth, uh, I believe there's there's been enough data uh, collected uh, uh, on this subject that it warrants a good serious look 
uh, by the legislature. And uh, again, I, I would urge they really go back and take a look at, at the, uh, the revenue side of that thing. I don't believe, at least in my mind, that it's been the, the revenue panacea that it was uh, 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 promised to be, uh, especially as far as uh, public safety being a beneficiary of those, uh, of, of those revenues. So uh, I, I don't think the loss of those, the, the money uh, would, would be the, the, the uh, uh, catastrophic event that perhaps it was sold to be when the legislation was, was first passed. Um, and in closing my remarks, we've uh, tried to keep people uh, informed as much as possible during the course of the year. I've got to say from my end of it, uh, I'm really pleased with the uh, feedback that I get to the uh, monthly articles that uh, Pennsylvania Fireman has been kind enough to publish that uh, of, of my comments and Tom Santana's work. And I've been amazed at the number of comments that I got back from people that didn't realize uh, that we had people uh, in Harrisburg doing this work for us. And so just for that awareness alone, I think it's been a, a very positive year. And, and like uh, others, uh, I wanna thank everybody that uh, uh, we're, we're contacting legislators this year. Uh, we, we've had a lot of legislative uh, uh, contact uh, this year, I think, uh, at least in my area, more than uh, we've had in, in, in a number of years. And I'm not suggesting that we become pen pals or, or phone buddies with these folks, but I think it's important that we let these people know in, in no uncertain terms what our feelings are on these issues, and just as importantly, the rationale behind our, our positions. And I've had some uh, excellent uh, uh, conversations with a couple of legislature, le legislators. And uh, 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 just to throw one out, uh, uh, a young fellow that we've got, not, not one of mine, he, he's in part of our county, but uh, Park Wentling, I've had some just absolutely fantastic conversations with uh, during, during the course of the year. And uh, so I, I would suggest that uh, as many people as possible take advantage of, of uh, communications with their uh, representatives. And I, I think that covers what I uh, want to contribute. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Mark Hamilton and then Chief Delaney. Good morning, everybody. I, I too wanted to start out uh, this morning uh, by uh, thanking Jerry for uh, putting this uh, meeting together and keeping us organized as a group. Uh, I think uh, a lot of the uh, progress that we've made this year is because uh, the group has uh, stayed together and, and done a lot of these calls uh, legislatively. And uh, I look forward to us sticking together as a group and uh, uh, moving forward the next couple of years to accomplish even more. Um, I'm happy to report today that uh, 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 County Commissioners Association, uh, they usually set their priorities um, uh, late in the fall in November and uh, uh, the EMS um, uh, task force has been, uh, that we have has been uh, initiated or allowed to uh, um, uh, keep our group together, our task force together, and work for another year. Um, the EMS um, issues um, are one of uh, CCAP's top three priorities, um, again, for uh, this coming year. Uh, we have a lot of commissioners uh, uh, around the state that are really realizing um, that uh, there, there, there's some uh, problems out there uh, both in fire and EMS, but uh, EMS seems to be the uh, the top top priority at the moment um, um, for uh, many of our commissioners around the state. Um, of course, uh, uh, we were very happy that we uh, um, were able to uh, get the our uh, uh, county or multi municipal authorities bill uh, started through. Uh, the process, and uh, we do hope that that's uh, 
uh, uh, reintroduced uh, early in the uh, new session. I uh, have to thank uh, Nate um, for um, his uh, participation and his help uh, as well on, uh, on uh, keeping uh, that on the forefront um, uh, and uh, having the sessions that, uh, that he put together for us on that. Um, one of the things that uh, we weren't, were not able to uh, move forward with uh, this last year uh, was uh, we uh, wanted to introduce a toolbox uh, per se uh, for the counties uh, to be able to deal uh, with uh, some of these uh, issues in the EMS world. Um, we had a um, contract, if you will, uh, with DCED uh, to help us uh, produce a, a pilot program um, uh, to actually uh, work on this uh, uh, toolbox. Um, and because of, uh, of course, the COVID uh, problems that we've had, uh, uh, DCED has been un unable to work with us um, at this point in time. We're, uh, that, that would be one of our priorities uh, the first part of the year, if we can get that started. Uh, a couple of the reasons, I, I, I think uh, if we can get this toolbox out um, uh, to the counties, um, I think it will help us with uh, the regionalization uh, process. Um, and uh, the, other, the other things that uh, we're, we're pretty happy that uh, um, we had a lot of movement with the legislature this year um, in the volunteer uh, areas uh, with some, some new incentives for the volunteers um, with uh, several of the bills, um, but that's, that's a Band-Aid. And we're realizing that uh, you know there's there's some help there, but that's 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 not going to cut it moving forward for a long period of time. Um, so a couple of the the things that we would really like to um, work on and help others, and I think we're we're going to be a participant with others in, in moving a couple of the other um, pieces that we're looking for. And one of those majors is the reimbursements and, and the revenues um, for, uh, for the um, ambulances. Uh, also um, on the radar for us is uh, the Act 35. And um, so um, anybody that's uh, working on uh, any legislation in those areas, please, please let me know so we can, uh, uh, we can tag on with you and, and get some things moving forward in that, that area. I think that's my report, unless there's questions. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you very much. Uh, Chief Delaney. Pulling this to together. Uh, this journey started January 23rd of 2017, uh, and I was proud to represent the Pennsylvania Career Fire Chiefs on SR6. Um, 39 of us worked tirelessly um, for almost a couple of years to come up with this, and it seems like uh, we, we did pretty good in some areas, and we did not so good in other areas. And I'll talk about recommendation number 10, uh, because it's disheartening to me uh, when we all pull together to make recommendation number 10 uh, part of SR6, and it deals with VLAP for career fire departments, yet the legislature rated this fund three different times, um, over $47 million and $6 million this past year. Uh, yes, we do have a legislative packet to move it forward, but when we talk at the big picture, um, this money was put in to VLAP um, by resolution, by the voters of the Commonwealth. The money was put in there, yet it was removed for the state budget. 
I, I think it puts us at, at a difficult position going in with our legislation. You know, that when Ed Mann was still the fire commissioner, he said there was definitely enough money in there to include career fire departments uh, in VLAP. But I'm not sure that that's still the same now that the legislature has taken the money from VLAP. So I, I think it puts us in an awkward position. And um, um, I'm just really, my organization is just not happy with that. Uh, so that's the first part with resolution, I, I'm sorry, recommendation number 10 in, in VLAP. And that's our position on that. Uh, the Pennsylvania Career Fire Chiefs Association re remains really committed to try to fix the fireworks um, uh, legislation. Uh, there is a lot of money at stake, um, and only $2 million of that money is earmarked for EMS, 75% uh, and 25% for volunteer fire training. Um, but aside from that, it took municipal government out of the equation where they couldn't have a local option whatsoever. Um, uh, some of the fines were ridiculous uh, and uh, we've really taken a lead with the Pennsylvania Municipal League and of course the Fight Emergency Services Institute to um, try to get a legislative package. Now, there's been several senators and there's been several house members that uh, have really worked with us to try to move it forward, but we need a big lift and it's all gonna start at the local level. Um, uh, with our local legislators, our local municipal officials, um, uh, mayor in the city of Lancaster, mayor in the city of Easton, mayor in Wilkesbury, uh, Scranton, and others uh, understand. And we have a lot of legislators on board that understand this needs to be. We would like to see it totally repealed. Uh, that's 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 our position. But if it can't, we we have some options in place. So we're going to ask the institute. Uh, and uh, the rest of you on here to continue to partner with us to try to fix a wrong uh, with the, the legalization of consumer grade fireworks. Uh, I, I'm still appalled that we could light something up. We could light something on the ground uh, uh, that burns hot enough to melt glass and we could send that up into the sky. We have no idea where it's gonna go to or what it's gonna do once it's lit. So. Uh, thanks for your continued support, Jerry, and, and hopefully we can uh, move something on VLAP and move something on uh, the fireworks legislation uh, in 2021. Sounds good, Chief. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's going to be uh, Kim Homan and uh, Heather will be up next and then Nate. Kim. Thanks, Jerry. Um, not to take everybody's time, but uh, just to elaborate on kind of what everybody's already said. I appreciate everything that everybody's been doing. Uh, we're working really hard. Uh, but personal thing for good fellowship um, act 91 the relief protection we are an organization that was receiving funds prior to 2010 um, and that interpretation change uh, did put our relief money at risk um, and it is truly because of sr6 and then some um, factors we did here with our fire department locally um, is the only reason our audit cleared so we are actually one of the first people to go through the audit um, with an mou an agreement with a local fire company that actually cleared that finding from our audit, uh, but the protection that allows in Act 91 is critical for those organizations who were receiving the money prior to 2010. So I cannot thank you enough, Representative Ferry. Um, I can't thank him enough. Uh, so we greatly appreciate that. It, it matters a lot when you're fighting for every dollar. Um, just like Heather and Jeanette said, for us, it is the funding. It all comes down to the funding, um, just like you guys in fire. So that is gonna be a battle that we're gonna be fighting for quite some time. So not to, I'm not gonna, beat the drum that we've already beaten, but I appreciate all of you and I'm glad to be a part of this. Thank you, Kim. I uh, appreciate that feedback. Uh, Heather. All right, thank you very much for coordinating this. I think um, us getting together and talking about SR6 and where we're going and putting this together is, is such a great thing. Working together is gonna to be huge for us going forward. As I mentioned earlier, January 22nd, we have our strategic planning session where we will start talking about what are priorities for us. We did have some priorities with the SR6 report. Um, I just wanted to touch a little bit on a couple of things that you had mentioned, the county authorities uh, working with the County Commissioners Association, the board did take a position that they were going to support the legislation. And of course, with the end of the legislative session, 
we weren't able to move that forward, but we do have a couple of um, concerns. We did a survey of our members. And so we are going to meet with a couple of the uh, commissioners, Mark Hamilton, who's on this um, surprise. I'm gonna be contacting you about getting together. And then uh, the Lisa Schaefer from the association as well as Commissioner Boozle, but that will be coming up because I know they have a meeting coming up this week. When we talk about the EMS funding streams, you mentioned that that was actually completed. That actually is not completed. That is just kind of one answer to a multifaceted issue. It is not over yet. Funding continues to be an issue as Kim and Jeanette had mentioned. Direct pay, of course, is going to always be on our radar. The medical assistance policies. Uh, I wanted to talk about the heavy lifts that EMS answers and the issues with the SR6 report are. And those heavy lifts go up against the insurance industry because they are reimbursement related. It goes against the um, their priorities. So it is a heavy lift to get these types of things done. And of course, we've got federal issues, we've got all kinds of things. So working together is going to be good. And even though SR6 is a great framework for us, it is what was. I think COVID has really highlighted the um, struggles of the first responders, fire and EMS um, being hit with COVID positive personnel and what you have to do for PPEs and you know just kind of how it has hit all of us I think that's an important talking point for us as we go forward for instance the hazard pay snub of EMS was absolutely horrible and um, I think going forward we need to let the public know we need to let the legislators know that you know, we are important, we need to be funded, we need to have some help. And I think that's gonna be very important for us moving forward with the next legislative session. And that's it. Thank you, Heather, very, very important points. And again, we'll, we'll do uh, any follow-ups uh, to pe with people once we get through everyone. Uh, uh, Nate. Well, thank you, Jerry. And thank you everyone uh, for being on this call and your participation. Uh, not just in the SR6, but um, you know, seeing us through this uh, last session and pleased with the number of results that, that we were able to achieve. Uh, certainly appreciate Jerry Ozog organizing this and um, all of Jerry's help and uh, you know, not just uh, directly uh, communicating with me, but helping to be a conduit here for a number of you as well. Uh, so appreciate that. Um, as been stated already today, there's a number of items that need to be completed as a result of what uh, action has been taken. You know, you heard from the fire commission regarding the COVID grants that certainly uh, needs to be uh, squared away in uh, the first part. And then right after that, uh, the new window for the, the regular reauthorized fire and EMS grants starts. So, you know, certainly the fire commissioner has been busy and, and is going to continue to stay busy as that uh, uh, the new uh, grants are, are done. You heard a little bit about the, the VLAP referendum uh, that will uh, be taking place come the spring. So looking forward to getting that done for you, Jay. And um, overall, there, you know, I am going to state, you know, while there was the six million uh, taken away, I was certainly not pleased uh, that, you know, when I heard about that situation. Uh, the truth is that uh, there is additional dollars that could be pulled down from the original bond authorization in the first place. So there is indeed available money for career fire. And, you know, the, um, for us in terms of the SR6 commission and, and uh, related partners is to make sure that we're on the same page, you know, advocating for our, our, our career fire as it comes to that May referendum. But there is indeed money that could be, that if needed, uh, can still be drawn down from that original bond authorization. So that's my understanding on that front. Um, um, you heard about the, the positions within the fire commissioner's office. We're hope you know uh, that money was uh, appropriated in in 2019. Uh, it's our hope that we can get that uh, those positions up and running to help uh, our our volunteer fire companies across the Commonwealth on on the very important uh, roles of recruitment and retention. 
uh, the appointment of the fire advisory board. It's going to be important uh, uh, to get that uh, up and running. There's a number of studies that need to happen next year in regards to relief and looking looking forward to getting that going. And a number of uh, moving parts here from, from Act 91 overall. Uh, in terms of legislation, um, my, you know, on my uh, list are a number of the things that have already been stated. Countywide public safety authorities, thank you for everybody that's been working through that issue. It's my hope that it can be uh, agenda up early in the legislative session. That was uh, Senate Bill 1274. Um, the Community College Secondary Education Pilot Program, that was Senate Bill 331. That's passed this, uh, the Senate the last uh, two sessions, and we're hopeful that uh, something like that, there's a small dollar amount associated with it, but that we can get some of these partnerships between community colleges and higher education and basic education um, uh, advanced and, and replicated across the Commonwealth. One fun thing that's not mentioned in SR6, uh, but been working on in terms of the law enforcement uh, was medals of commendation here for our law enforcement. That was Senate Bill 1246, and Senator Regan's looking forward to also uh, introducing measures here for the fire side as well as the EMS side. So look forward to that here real soon. Uh, junior firefighters, we took a step in uh, the last session. We're looking forward to having a broader conversation on what we can do in terms of recruiting and training um, junior firefighters. And of course, I'm not um, blind here to the uh, what's out there on fireworks. You know, again, uh, there was some action taken here by the Senate. Uh, Senator Brown led the effort in getting something passed over to the, to the House. Uh, we do need to have a broader conversation and make sure that we're all on the same page um, uh, in terms of what we truly need uh, out of uh, the changes on that front. And I'm um, another hat that I wear is as a township commissioner. I'm the president of the State Association of Township Commissioners uh, this, uh, this year and look forward to helping uh, advance items from and promoting things from that end. So with that, thanks again, everybody, for your help and support. You know, we were successful in getting a number of items done, you know, with the, the big boom being uh, Act 91, uh, a lot of pieces in there. You know, it would have been nice to have uh, individual pieces done uh, to get through, but um, it's not always easy, this legislative process, as, as you've seen and, and you know uh, throughout the years. But um, uh, I'm committed from my angle, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to continue to push forward on these things together. But thanks, Jerry. Okay, Nate, sounds good. Uh, the next one, I've got uh, B.J. Meadowcroft and uh, Bill Rossi and then Mike Hillman. Uh, B.J. Thank you, Jerry. Um, I'll let Bo do our comments today. I just want to say that uh, you know, this year in Chester County, we completed our fire and EMS strategic plan. And, uh, you know, at every angle, SR6 was at the, back, at the backbone of it. It's, you know, it, it steered how we did work. It steered uh, how uh, municipal resources worked. and uh, you know, it's, it, it remains vital to, to continue to move forward, but I'll, I'll let Bo finish up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bill Rossi from uh, Sharpsburg. Mike, why don't you go? Mike Hillman. Sure thing. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you as always for all the the good work you're doing in the community and for your advocacy on these very important issues. Um, I think we did have a very successful session uh, last time. Um, very pleased with how the House worked together to get a lot of things sent over to the Senate. Um, in fact, I was texting with Rick this morning. He hope, I know he hopes to get everyone together for a meeting possibly in January to talk about the agenda uh, going forward in the 2021-22 session. Um, excited about a lot of the things that we that we can get done um, and uh, Always happy to uh, be available to you for anything that, that, you, that we can provide to you. So thanks again, Jerry, for organizing. Uh, no problem. And, and Rick did get uh, back to me earlier. He was planning on attending this morning, but uh, the storm duties uh, took him elsewhere. Uh, Joel Landis is on, but Joel is having a mic issue. So he, Joel from Somerset County, uh, EMC, uh, he's not able to uh, speak. Uh, next one up is Gary Waters uh, and then Bo. Morning, Jerry. Thanks for hosting this again. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Uh, the issues that I, that I just want to bring up is uh, hopefully the reintroduction of uh, Senate Bill 1274. I, I believe that that's probably one of the top priorities to try to help uh, resolve some of the issues with uh, fire and EMS agencies and availability and the, the quality of service and the response to calls uh, within our counties. 
Um, the also the other uh, the issue from uh, our EMS service level would be direct reimbursement um, in the uh, the changes to the uh, Medicaid payments. Um, but again, thank you. I appreciate all the work you guys do, and uh, I hope everybody's surviving from the winter. All right, you good, Gary? Yep, I cut you short. You weren't prepared. I know. I'm, uh, I'm there. Um, Bo Crowding. Thank you. Uh, obviously, you know, I agree with just about everything that's been said, so I don't want to keep repeating, uh, but obviously it's good to see this group still together. Uh, BJ was very valid in his part where that uh, strategic plan is helping uh, locally for us to put a lot of this on people's radar. Uh, SR6 has done that as well. Uh, you know, we have a lot of municipalities and agencies looking at consolidation. Uh, we even have uh, municipalities looking at going with sole source. Uh, agencies, which causes uh, rifts when there's uh, multiple close by agencies. Uh, but if anything, it has um, all this stuff that we've talked about in SR6 on people's radar. Um, I know we said, you know, we were past crisis and that was our message. Um, I, it's gotten worse. So I don't know if, you know, what's the next classification is a disaster. Um, but, you know, um, all the stuff happening, you know, we're still trying to digest the latest uh, successes coming through there, uh, especially like, you know, the county tax credit uh, and things like that. But, you know, everything that's happening, uh, I, there's more happening um, from when we were at SR60. Uh, so uh, we just need to keep engaged and, you know, look forward to uh, keeping the movement going. Thank you. Uh, got it. That'd be uh, JT. You're going to be up next. JT Pennington. Thanks, Jerry. Um, first off, I want to say, uh, uh, introduce myself, JT Pennington. I'm the new president of the Pennsylvania Professional Firefighters. This is my first SR6 meeting, so I look forward to working uh, with everybody. Um, we all need to work towards our common goal, you know, and, and why we're all in this is to serve our citizens, no matter what we do um, or what uh, background we come from. I want to thank Steve and Jerry for everything that, you know, you do and continue to do. And also, uh, uh, Nate and uh, Mike, without you guys, we can't uh, get anything accomplished. So I really appreciate everything you guys have done um, so far. Um, we're going to be one of our goals. Main goals is House Bill 432, uh, getting that reintroduced. Uh, that's the PTSI to make sure uh, all firefighters and, and EMS are protected, that, that no one's out there, uh, don't get the help that they need and, and work on uh, preventing suicides with that. Um, uh, we'll be pushing big for uh, and looking for other help and assistance for the VLAP. Um, that's very important to municipal fire uh, fighters um, for them to get the help that they need. A lot of municipalities are struggling and they uh, don't have the funds to, to do some of that. So the, uh, the loans would be very uh, uh, beneficial. And then I'm looking forward to everybody uh, working with the uh, state fire advisory board so we can continue moving everything forward and just working towards everybody's goal. Uh, there's, uh, I'm giving you guys my commitment that uh, I'll be there for you guys, whatever you guys need and, uh, and ladies, and um, uh, just work towards what's best for the citizens of Pennsylvania. So thanks, Jerry. Sounds good. Um, Frank, Frank Zingari. Frank, you got to unmute there, buddy. I see you talking. Are you there? Yes. Okay. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, I, I got to agree with Jim. I think we need to follow up on that loopholes foreign relief tax letter we sent. We need to follow up on that in January and that uh, comments from the swab on redrafting legislation. Those are things we can work on in January. Uh, I'd like to see us continuing efforts on the juvenile firefighter uh, laws and regulations. We started working that program. I'd like to see us continue that. And my last comment is I strongly uh, recommend and, and I push that we have a say in the next announcement of the, the new fire commissioner, especially with a fire advisory board. I'm not announcing or pre-announcing Bruce's retirement, but uh, that position could burn us if it's just a political move and it's not something fire EMS wants in, in that position. So 
working for the state long enough to understand some positions are politically moved. That position cannot be. That recommendation has to come from this committee or, or a group of committees that are strong enough to say, here's the best candidate for that position, or here's several candidates, pick one. That's all I got. Jerry, thanks for uh, your presentation today. Got it. Um, Bill from uh, Sharpsburg, from the boroughs. I hear you. Try your mute again, Bill. You're still on mute. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. It's not working. Maybe you could type type a message to me. Send me an email and I'll do it. Something's going on there. I'm going to go on to uh, Bill Genoway. Thank you, Jerry. Good morning, everyone. And uh, thanks, everyone, for staying involved. Uh, it's very easy to walk away from these kinds of projects. And it's great to see everyone stuck around. I, I have a couple comments. Uh, the first one is with regard to relief. I, I believe that in the big picture, the relief funds could be managed the same as liquid fuel taxes are, fund, are managed. And it would eliminate a lot of complicated local level challenges, both from an operational and administrative and an audit standpoint, if we looked at that process being the same, meaning the money's coming to the municipalities anyway, let the municipal finance official be the responsible party for making sure that the funds are spent properly. And then figure out below that how you want to do it. But you know, in, in 11 years of elected office now, uh, I see that nobody ever challenges the liquid fuels funds. Why? Because they have an integrated process and, and it's handled by one person from a financial standpoint year after year after year after year. There's a lot to be, a lot that we can learn from that. Uh, that being said, let me, let me shift to uh, recruitment and retention, which was my area of responsibility for SR6. And, and the first challenge that I'm hearing from around the state is that fire companies are, and this, this starts out obviously with volunteers, but I'm hearing it from a com combination and career departments as well. With COVID's impacts on budgets, with COVID's impacts on the inability of departments to do any kind of, of fundraising, the funds available for spending are limited. They are unable to grow those funds and they're using reserves to cover general expenses. So regardless of the nature of the organization, our fire departments, and I'm assuming EMS is in the same, uh, same bailiwick, uh, our, our organizations are on the throes of potential financial disaster because of COVID-19. Yes, the CARES Act helped a little bit, but if you're losing 60 to $90,000 a year, and that's small in the big picture, if you're losing that and you're only able to get 20 back because that's all you can document that you've lost, we're, we're going to on the throes, not right now, but a year from now, we're on the throes of some significant financial challenges to the Pennsylvania Fire Service. And I didn't hear one, I haven't heard one elected official mention this anywhere in the Commonwealth. And that, that kind of concerns me because we're going to adversely impact infrastructure the more we ignore that. Um, I am hearing it at the federal level. I'm not hearing it at the local level. The recruitment and retention initiatives that, that were implemented uh, are great starts, but they really, in the big picture, are, are limited. If our, our organizations can use relief monies for low SEP, that's great. But if we still have to pay the basic insurance premiums, buy bunker gear, buy air packs, and do all that stuff with less money, how are we ever going to be able to get to afford low SAP programs? So again, looking at, at that restructuring becomes very, very important. The uh, other aspect, uh, and the reason I asked the commissioner this question, uh, managing the Firemen's Association's statewide grant program has been very enlightening uh, for the last five years. We've seen what local departments want in the way in, of incentives. FEMA, in their infinite wisdom, restricted the overwhelming majority of items that fire departments request, and they no longer can get those through the Firemen's Association's grants. So that meant that we're still looking at 50% of the money available for local grants 
in Pennsylvania is still available for this year because nobody's applying or they're applying for things that they can't get. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to send out, I'm going to ask Jerry to send out to this email list some information and maybe you can get to the local departments. There's money available for them to use. But it points out that with, with the commissioner's office inability to, to really get their program up and running, and I think we all understand why. We're not blaming it. We're, we're just, we get it. Um, but without that up and running, uh, departments aren't recruiting. Departments are suffering in retention. And the reality is our numbers are going to go below that 30,000 number without question. So uh, we have a lot of work cut out for us when it comes to getting people in the front door and keeping them um, in the front door. So uh, with that, uh, oh, one other comment. Uh, two years ago, I bought a house in New Jersey uh, at the beach. They would not give me a use and occupancy permit unless I had a 10 year smoke detector, carbon monoxide detector, uh, detector integrated into that and a fire extinguisher. They could have cared less if I had 32 different kinds of infestation. They could have cared less if I had any other structural problems. But as long as I had those three items in place, I got my use and occupancy permit. Pennsylvania can learn from its neighbor to the east. Thanks, thanks Bill. Uh, Steve McInnes from uh, Allegheny County. Sorry, Jerry. I was trying to figure out how to unmute. Um, I, I honestly don't have anything um, that hasn't already been said. I appreciate everybody's input. Um, kind of go from there. Okay, sounds good, Steve. Uh, Tom Santana. Hey, good morning, Jerry and everybody. You cut yourself off there, Tom. Still there, Tom? To note that not all legislative issues got as much attention as these issues this year. A lot of them really tanked um, for some obvious reasons. I think a, a lot of the success that uh, this group experienced was because of the constant coordination. And um, I hope that that continues in this next legislative session. And, and I look forward to working with everybody in that capacity. Thanks. Got it, Tom. Take a look here. I'm just making sure that I uh, just want to make sure that I uh, have. Uh, is there anybody else that uh, anybody else that I missed? Adam, Adam Peters, do you want to introduce yourself? I know you work for Mike. Yes. Hey, I'm Adam Peters. I'm in Representative. Senato's office as well with Mike Hillman. So I, um, I echo what he said. This is my first meeting um, on SR6. I've been with the committee for a year now. Um, so I'm happy to be here, happy to hear um, everything that's been accomplished and knowing what needs to be accomplished from the report. So uh, thank you for sharing everything today. Thank you. And I got it. And I did get a chat message from uh, Bill Rossi. Uh, again, Bill is uh, the borough manager from Sharpsburg, and he represented uh, on SR6, the uh, Pennsylvania Boroughs Association. Uh, and his message is he wanted to thank everyone for the continuing of this project. Uh, we had an election in November, and there's some big changes coming next year. Uh, we need to involve new legislators in our efforts uh, over the past couple of years. And again, that's, uh, again, very, that's, continuing advocacy message uh, to uh, members of the House and Senate and, and newly elected members. Uh, that is something that I do personally when I meet with uh, fire uh, and emergency services organizations. And I specifically kind of teach them how to effectively communicate with uh, their, their members of, of the uh, their, their members uh, of the General Assembly and their and their local officials. So we that, that's one of the uh, one of the priorities that I have been uh, been working on. Uh, I believe, uh, let me see, I don't think Josh is still on here, um, but uh, does anybody have any follow-ups to 
Any of uh, the previous discussions? Anybody have any follow-ups? It's like Jim's. Uh, yes, uh, Jerry. Uh, I want to go back and, and revisit uh, the VLAP uh, subject again um, and, and the uh, appropriation that they took from the fund this year. Um, looking back at history being what it is, uh, lessons to be learned from what happened this year. On the original crisis grant proposal, we had proposed taking some money out of VLAP to use uh, for immediate crisis grants that would have avoided uh, this long application process and everything that we've gone through and, and would have gotten money into the hands of organizations a lot faster, although it would have been a, a smaller amount. And of course, that, that didn't happen. They opted to go with the CARES Act uh, uh, first. And, and I know the fire commissioner came out and he didn't want to take the money from VLAP and, and, and so on. What I didn't realize at that time was that apparently back uh, when they did the first part of the budget, they authorized the fact that they were going to take the, the uh, $6 million in the fall, and we didn't know about it. And, and I know we raised questions about that several times during the summer. And, and uh, again, uh, this stuff happens with, without us knowing uh, that it was, was, was uh, preordained, if you will, no wonder they didn't want us to take the money and use it for our own benefit, those of us that paid interest into that fund, uh, because they already had their eyes on it and have proved taken it. Uh, to, to me, that's just uh, unconscionable. And, and in looking at the money that's been taken out of that fund by, by the uh, uh, legislature and going back, uh, somebody uh, mentioned earlier today about uh, Ed Mann, he had uh, uh, a task force uh, meeting uh, uh, in conjunction with one of the PFESI meetings years ago. Uh, I think it was the last year he was in office actually, uh, where some recommendations were made on, on how to uh, uh, improve uh, that fund. And, and this was before we talked about bringing the municipalities in to it, but uh, simplifying the application process and increasing uh, the loan authorization amounts to 80% uh, of the buy with, with a 20% down uh, on the thing. Uh, even with the increase in amounts, we've got uh, uh, treasurers that don't want to participate in the program because of the cumbersome application process uh, uh, and the relative small amount uh, towards their project and they can go out and get a bridge loan for the rest of it with uh, a lot simpler process to go through. And we were, Ed had plans that uh, we were gonna meet again. Uh, and, and of course uh, politics changed and he was out of a job and we never had those meetings. And uh, even though those recommendations were reduced to writing and submitted, uh, uh, they were never, never looked at. And I think it's time we maybe take a look at it with the municipal people coming on board of really rebooting that, that, that program and, and, and going back and revisiting those recommendations and seeing if we can't get something done to it. And then also remember, I've had uh, one treasurer in particular talk to me several times about the fact that, that he's never gonna apply for, for another one of those loans as long as he's in office as a treasurer because he's not about to pay interest into a state fund only to have the legislators steal it. And, and, and he, 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 his mind is made up. He's been treasurer for a long time. So there, there's, there, there's no way that organization for the foreseeable future will ever consider it again. And, and uh, in his professional job, he's a government employee. So you know how hard his head has to be. But anyway, I, I, I think that's something that we really need to, to take a look at. And one final point with that, uh, Nate was talking about the fact that the bond issues that were authorized years ago are there and that we could raise some more money by selling those bonds. As I recall it, the Treasury Department put a moratorium on selling those bonds. And, and before we just naturally assume that that money is there to draw down, uh, what hoops would we have to jump through uh, to get a ruling that we could actually sell those bonds that were authorized years ago and that have never been sold? Over to you. 
That's Nate. Jim, we'll be happy to take a look at that question when that when those funds are needed. Again, we're not to the point that the funds are needed. Uh, you know, I mean, number one, the VLAP program is so, you know, is, is you know, uh, fire companies aren't applying for it in mass like, like they used to because they can get, you know, just as great interest rates on the, on the open market as it is. So at some point, you know, this is going to be, you know, as interest rates go up, this will be a, this will prove to be a very valuable program as it, as it has in the past. Um, and again, once the, once we are authorized, once the voters approve getting the, uh, the career in there, you know, some of these conversations can be had, but we're not at that point yet, but I'm not a bond expert, but I'll, you know, as I had this conversation at the beginning of the session with our appropriations folks, we talked about the fund. We talked to, my initial ask was that we talk about uh, restoration because that was a big conversation in the SR6 commission. Um, and while that didn't get anywhere, my next point was to uh, insert language into uh, Senate Bill 908, which uh, we did have language in there uh, to help uh, restrict uh, 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 redirection of those funds. Not, I'm not gonna call it stealing because uh, it's all government funds there at the state level, but I appreciate your, uh, uh, your point there, Jim. Uh, nonetheless, um, that language was ultimately uh, taken out. Uh, done my best here from my vantage point and hopefully the other uh, uh, um, legislators are also tuned in. It needs to be that conversation again from your level to your legislators to make sure that we're all tuned in and the importance of these funds. But again, uh, the truth is right now uh, there, you know, there is uh, uh, enough funding in that program and we'll have the appropriate conversations uh, should that, uh, those additional dollars be needed. Well, one final point there, uh, when, when you say, uh, you know, contact with your legislators, uh, I did that and my legislators found out we were taking that money from the fund from me. That to me is unacceptable. Okay, well, come up with a better legislative process. <laughs> I, I, I've been involved with this for, for, for 20, 20 plus years. It's not an easy process, not a fun process. When you're, um, and when we're talking about all these, a uh, number of bills coming down the pike at the end, it's, it, you're, you're not gonna uh, always be hearing about these things uh, right off the bat. But um, I, again, it's important for all legislators to be tuned into the programs um, and, and ensuring. Uh, the 911 program, uh, we were able to um, uh, keep the administration from uh, utilizing 911 funds because there's also a, a, cap there's a caveat in the law uh, that those funds are uh, restricted. And there's also uh, uh, f uh, federal uh, uh, restrictions as well on, on that, that we would have lost our federal money had we taken that. Now, it's not the same here with the VLAP program, but again, it's important for us all to communicate the importance of these programs now so that uh, down the line, uh, you're not educating them after the fact. Yes, and I, I did wanna mention that too, Jim, that uh, uh, Nate and I uh, did talk and there was language put in there to restrict that use of VLAP and it, you know, as it moved up, moved up the ladder, it disappeared. Other, other follow-up conversation, other, other follow-up comments to any of the previously stated comments? Either wave your hand or anything like that. Um, uh, Jerry, uh, it's me again. Yes, uh, not, not to prolong the discussion, but as long as uh, Nate and Mike are on line here, um, it kind of relates to us, but it's been off of our radar. I know you follow it along, but that's the uh, 911 commission. And, and what's the latest on uh, the funding factor fiasco. I understand we're sticking with the temporary funding factor for another year uh, because they haven't been able to pass the recommendation of their committee. Jim, as of right now, uh, at, at the 911 um, advisory board met on uh, December 3rd and Pima announced that they're going to make some uh, unilateral changes on that front. Uh, uh, provide some extra funding for the, the uh, you know, the counties that were um, going to receive the additional funds with, uh, with, with the new funding formula. You know, in terms of uh, our office, we're certainly willing to uh, keep, uh, continue to engage in conversations here on the, on the grander uh, funding formula. But again, we didn't think it was appropriate uh, that uh, we implement the change here in, in 2020 uh, during this year of COVID. But again, um, the, 
Pima has taken some uh, unilateral action on that front, and we'll have uh, we'll see where it goes in uh, the next uh, board meeting in March. Maybe I didn't phrase my question correctly. You're you're right. I, I was aware of what they did there. I was thinking about our fire commission advisory board coming along, and it, it kind of looks to me like with Pima taking the unilateral action, they've more or less neutered that 911 commission, and and. Uh, you're, you're right. Their action is unilateral, and 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 uh, it, it's you know, the 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 911 task force uh, is, is kind of irrelevant to what they're doing. And I'm thinking about uh, the same type of scenarios happening with our ad advisory board because it's not an actual fire commission that was in that that legislation. I didn't know if you had any thoughts about that process or or how that uh, sausage gets ground. Well, I'm looking certainly looking forward to getting our, our new uh, fire advisory board up and running. That's that's number one. And then, you know, really the proof is going to be in the pudding here. And it certainly has every opportunity in the world to fail, uh, just like anything uh, we try. But um, I, I, you know, having worked on that uh, that language, I think it's a, I think it's a, a good mix here of, of career and volunteer uh, geographical, uh, you know, the Pima board had been operating very well since its inception. Uh, you know, obviously, like I said, you, you hit you hit the button there. Pima, you know, took some action here without you know the you know the consent here from the advisory board. And look, that's some of these things are going to happen, but that doesn't mean it's 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 you know it wasn't worth the effort. And there's going, I believe that there is going to be a lot of good coming out of the advisory board in terms of the study, taking a look at legislation, being tuned in communicating with uh, with folks on the ground, you know, at the local level. So, but, you know, will it be perfect? Absolutely not. All right, everybody. Uh, with that, I think we're going to call it. Uh, if anybody would have any uh, additional comments, uh, you have my email uh, and communication. Uh, we will be, again, continuing. Please watch the uh, PFESI um, emails that I do send out, the constant contact information, uh, our swab meetings that we have. Probably the next one will be in March sometime uh, and, and other things that come out. So uh, we will be putting, I'll be putting together a, uh, you know, kind of like an outcome of this and, uh, you know, it's kind of surrounding, you know, the relief comes to the top. Uh, you know, uh, of new things, the relief comes to the top, the countywide public safety authorities come to the top, uh, and, uh, you know, the implementation of Act 91, those are kind of the nuts and bolts things, and the, the fireworks, I'm sorry, the fire, the fireworks slash uh, other things, so that's probably, and the junior fireman type thing too, that's one of the other things. Uh, we'll keep everybody updated, and I'd like to thank everybody. Uh, now it's time for me to get my snowblower out and clean my driveway. Thank, thank, thank you, Gary. Thank, thank you very much. much, everyone. Yes. Bye.